from the corners of the internet to the wave signals transmitting through your brain. You are now sinking into all aware, preparing transmission signals. Stand by. of all aware i'm nathan roshan and man has it been a hot august i'm not just talking about the temperature but i mean look at all this stuff coming out um yeah we've had crazy weather temperatures in the west and in the midwest this summer talking about uh temperatures over 100 degrees in the uh midwest and uh texas scene even a little bit higher than that uh and uh Ohio and, and, and the eastern seaborne seeing some humid hot temperatures that haven't been around for a couple of years. Uh, so it's been crazy, but we've also had a lot of groundbreaking, hard hitting truths from whistleblowers, government committees, uh, and even some uh, corrupt news agencies couldn't keep some of this stuff under wraps. Uh, we're going to be talking about this uh we have talked about this in, in previous podcasts but we'll we'll talk about it more uh later this this fall but we're but things that are coming out in the public now that that can't be held back are things like public confessions of ufos and uaps or unidentified aerial phenomenon that's the new term they uh have tried uh, have started to go to uh truth about the lies behind uh, the impeachment attempts of President Donald Trump for a uh, third time uh, now. And just this week, a DOD task force committee member released some truths about the United States Corporation. Uh, this is something that American state nationals uh, have been talking about for a few years now, uh, trying to get out in the public. And uh, it's, it's been seen as another conspiracy, but it's now coming out. Um, that this is the case, um, that we have been de- uh, enslaved, we have been bankrupt, um, and the people of the United States uh, are, are not as free as we uh, once believed. Um, in that interview, they talked about the Act of 1871, which enslaved the American people and our assets, um, and they've also talked about um, the gold, bringing gold back to our country from the Vatican, which, um, you know, we can go on that some other time, but that's a major, major um, crucial release there of that information. So uh, um, perhaps, you know, if if you're one of the people or you know somebody who may need uh, it to come from the proverbial horse's mouth, it's starting to come out from uh, just that place, the mainstream media. So hold tight, Uh, there's probably, probably more to come. But tonight on this exciting episode, we have author, biblical researcher, and a fellow American state national, John Kerwin on the program. John is the author of A Conspiracy Theorist Survival Guide and founder of Wake Up or Else PMA. 
John has recently been discussing a lot about the Mandela effect. Uh, and I think we talked about this a couple years ago, maybe last year in episode 205. I'm pretty sure that's it. So if you want to go back and check that out either before uh, you watch this one or after, it's fine. Um, but for tonight, for the last six years, John has been providing a biblical analysis of the Mandela effect. According to his research, the changes that are occurring in our reality include the Bible. John will be discussing how this could be happening and some of the prophecies that foretold this event would take place. You don't want to miss this episode, so grab your favorite beverage, that comfy spot on the couch or that seat position in your car or truck, and let's get ready. We will be right back with John Kerwin on episode 313 of All Aware with Nathan Roshan. Stay tuned. You are tuned into the All Aware Podcast. Like, subscribe, and visit us on these platforms. Be sure to check out our website at allawarepodcast.com. Want to get a hold of Nathan Rashawn? Email him at allaware at mail.com. And welcome back to All Aware. John Kerwin and I are sitting down here over the internet airwaves uh, here on All Aware. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, a couple topics tonight. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about, if you don't if you don't know John Kerwin, he uh, is the writer and the author of a book for the Truther community. Uh, it's called The Conspiracy Theorist Survival Guide, a guidebook for persecuted truthers. And I uh, just got done reading this book actually the other day. It's it's a really good book. It actually, um, I actually like um, it makes it so when you're a critical thinker, uh, it makes you feel like you're not alone because, you know, you always feel alone uh, when you're when you're going down these rabbit holes uh, and trying to figure out, uh, you know, what to believe and what not. Um, and you start you start finding the truth. Uh, you start, you know, factually looking at things and, and you start talking to people around you. And most of the people around you, you know, are like, what are you, what are you talking about? That's crazy. You know, and uh, so what I like about the book, too, is uh, you have similar experiences in that um, that you mentioned in the book. So uh, but anyways, um, so I kind of introduced you a little bit uh, in the pre uh the pre-intro promo here, but uh, if you could just give a little information about yourself, John, and how you got to where you're at right now, man. Yeah, absolutely. Great to be with you, Nathan, and your listeners. And yeah, the <laughs> the experience is pretty universal. I've been creating content now for about seven years on YouTube and interacted with thousands of, of truthers, if we can call them that. And I think it's helpful to define what a truther is. It's really somebody that started to question officialdom. Questioning the official story is kind of what, where you get converted from being a normie to a truther. But anyway, uh, my experience is that this type of persecution is universal. Now, some people don't have it as bad as others. Like, Personally, I have talked to probably interacted directly with close to 200 people now in the last wow. seven years that have been divorced by their spouse because they found out, I mean, you name it, the moon landing is fake, NASA's fake, the ISS guys are on wires, the earth is flat, the Mandela effect is real, there's underground bases, chemtrails, two-party system, deep state. I mean, it's just all of these things. And you're blowing people's minds right now, man. <laughs> right? I mean, that's the big laundry list. Okay. Know, I'm not right? saying you have to believe all those to have a problem. I've seen it where people they glom onto one of those. Yeah. And so it's a very up it upends your life when this happens because your whole world is turned upside down. It's like the, the Truman show. Yeah, it is. <laughs> right. And, and we're changed. The truth is changed almost literally overnight. Whereas the spouse or the friend, 
isn't. They're, they're still the same. And they're looking at you like, you know, you have really gone off the rails. And uh, But the great example of it is like the Truman Show, where if you've ever seen that Jim Carrey movie where yeah, he- Yeah, good movie. Right? It do, it doesn't that describe our, our journey? Like, to Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're living your life. You're happy. You're doing your family. You're doing your events, your activities, your soccer programs, whatever. Uh, and, and then all of a sudden you see a little glimpse over here that doesn't look like it should be in your reality. And you're like, wait a second. And then you go you go a little deeper. Like, let's say it's the wallpaper, right? You're like, what? There's wallpaper yeah, yeah. on the side of the you know dome or what? You know? <laughs> yeah. And then all of a sudden you're a different person because because now, you know, there's things that you're not aware of uh that is not true so yeah i i know exactly and you're so true um the truman show is a perfect example Perf- you- and imagine like looking at the truman show the greatest scene is where he goes into the office building and the elevator opens and they didn't have the back of the elevator doors like the wall was open and he could see yeah. the actors yeah. and they hurriedly close the thing and they usher him out well that was it all right well that's you that's me We've seen the actors. I, I'm not saying yep. that we live on a TV studio, but it's almost in some ways it's worse than that. Yep. And imagine if Truman, after seeing that, just went back to his life the way he used to live and just, oh yeah, my wife, my fiance is an actress, but it doesn't matter. And I live in a TV studio, but that's right. I'm just going to go to work tomorrow and just live. No, no, it's it's like, life-changing to find out that the majority of the constructs of society are fabricated and there's masters of illusion spinning this crazy sci-fi horror show you know that's churning underneath the the realms of what most people can perceive but now you've been able to peek over the wall and you're like what this is so great and your spouse and friends are just like uh I can't have a relationship with you if you talk about that stuff anymore, you know? Yeah. So yeah. that's what the, the book I wrote is about. It's about the journey of the truther. How you, yeah. ha- how you, how you doing truther? How's I it love going? It, man. <laughs> I love it, man. It's, it's, yeah. it's awesome. It's here. It's like, you got 305 pages. How long did it take you to write that thing, man? It was the hardest thing I ever did. Uh, it took, I took six months off and lived off of savings uh, a, lo- a lot of the content was from last year because uh, I had like, a, a, we have an online Christian fellowship and I was doing a, a talk every Sunday night. I would come to this thing every Sunday at seven with th- with 20 pages of notes. So the, the talks are like three hours. And I just talked about, you know, how do you do this as a Christian truther, discipling the believers in walking with Jesus as a truther? Because when you become a Christian, you very often will get persecuted by the by the world, but when you become a truther, you get persecuted <laughs> by the church and everybody around you. So it's next level. Everybody, yeah, it's next level. Not just society, but church as well, and the yep. Christian movement. Yeah, <laughs> it's really unfortunate. Yeah, it, it, you know that's one thing you you would think. Um, you know, being uh, you know in your Christian fellowship that. Uh, People would be uh, open to uh, hearing that kind of stuff, but uh, <laughs> it's it's quite the well, opposite sometimes. Yeah, what we find, Nathan, is that the church leaders are the most normy type people. You would think they would be open to you know exotic things and things outside the Overton window, but they have this force field around them that is impenetrable, and I think a lot of it has to do with what I call the rich young ruler principle. So there's this story in the New Testament where this guy comes to Jesus and he walks up and he says, Master, I've I've kept all the commandments from my youth up. What do I lack? And Jesus looks at him, reads his mail, right? And says, give away everything you have to the poor and follow me and you'll have great reward in heaven. And the next verse says, and he went away sad because he had great riches. <laughs> So (laughs) you go to the pastor with, you know, the fact that the NASA's fake or, you know, pick a a topic. It doesn't matter. Um, 
my lane is I, I provide a biblical analysis of the Mandela effect. That's what I've been doing for the last six, seven years. And so, it's just, yeah. it's like the meeting get cut short. You're told you need medication. You have a demon. Don't talk about this stuff. And it's the end of it. And and so that now many Christians have left the church trying to find Jesus because the church can't tolerate Christ, con, Christian conspiracy theorists, kooks, nut jobs, trafficking in the dark corners of the internet. Yeah, That's I, the way we're perceived. Yeah, and I know there's a lot of... Uh... Uh, movements like that across the country that are forming like you you have one of them with uh, uh wake up or else um yeah. your pma what you guys are doing but the, I, i've seen some here locally um i travel a lot for my jobs and things and uh i i've seen them all over i mean they're popping up i mean people are renting out uh buildings uh and having uh actual physical meetings too um uh, where you know, it's a safe, safer place for people that want to have open minds and also still want to believe in the teachings of the Bible and um, and follow a Christian conservative or just Christian mindset. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So I think that's great. Um, So let's let's kind of get into your book, if you don't mind, and kind of talk about like who. Uh, who who was the audience of of your book? Was it like pastors? Are you trying to get across to them? Uh, is it more for just the general public, or just yeah. for for all of us here? Oh no, it's definitely for everybody. Okay. You know, if, if um if your friends have told you you're crazy, and your spouse, your children think you're crazy, and your life is like a veil of tears, then this book's for you. It's not for <laughs> the unconvinced. So if you go to Amazon, you put in conspiracy theorists you'll find two kinds of books. One is all the books trying to convince people that conspiracy theories are crazy. And there's books for your spouse is going down the rabbit hole. This is how you can get them out. <laughs> then the other half of the, of the books is people trying to convince you that the conspiracy theories are true. Okay, but we already, we all consume this material all the time. So we already are convinced that things are true. So this is really the only book that I know of that is for the truther. It's for Christians or truthers that are in this journey, but it's for the soul. It's for your intellect, your mind, your will, your emotions, and trying to wrestle with the persecution that you inevitably get when you lift up your hand and say, oh, I believe this is fake. You know, the emperor has no clothes. And then the, the normie has what I call a death to truth or algorithm that they, they can't engage in intelligent discourse. They attack you. <laughs> so it's really hard to deal with. Yeah. Really hard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with uh, in your book here, there was a section um, that I was reading and, and it kind of got to me. You're talking about your family uh, and, and there was a specific point. Um, where you were saying like you wanted basically you wanted to say you wanted to tell him a truth about uh you know chemtrails you you were looking out the window that's kind of kind of how <laughs> how i envision it maybe <laughs> and you were like i want to tell him because they were saying how beautiful the sun is how yeah. beautiful that everything is <laughs> and uh and you you held your mouth and and you were like you know i can't i can't say that so right uh, can you walk us through kind of that frustrating moment like what I mean, that's, oh, yeah. we this all have great. that. Yeah. So this is great. because I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this. All right. So I got to set this up. So basically, like chapter six in the book, I go through the three stages of rejection. Okay. So at first, your friends, your family, they just keep it kind of light. And you'll start talking about, hey, the moon landing's fake or whatever, whatever it is. Um, and they'll be just, oh, I don't really go into conspiracy theories much. So they're basically just kind of keeping it light and but when they drop that term conspiracy theorist is a it was created by the cia in, in 67 yep offset the people that were trying to talk about jfk assassination and so it's a yep. character assassination term yep it's designed to shame you into silence and it means a lot of things so if i say oh i i don't go in for conspiracy theories like that what I'm saying is, first of all, I don't believe what you're saying is true. Secondly, I think you should be ashamed for mentioning it because only crazy people talk about those things. And thirdly, I don't want you to talk about it anymore. So it's like, 
you know, the hand goes up. Yeah. And it's very aggressive. And actually, biblically, Matthew chapter five, Jesus says, don't say to your brother, he's Raka, which is empty head, or don't say fool, or you're in danger of going to hellfire, right? Matthew right. chapter five, don't call somebody a fool, you can go to hell. Well, when they say you're a conspiracy theorist, that's the exact same sentiment. So yeah. it's not a nice term. And before I forget, let me give you one of the tips from the book. Sure. This took me a long time to figure out. Trying to accommodate my the people in my life that don't want to talk about these things, I was silent about everything for two years. But these terms would still come up. And I wish I had learned this earlier. So what you do when anybody invokes that term, conspiracy theory, kook, fringe, trafficking in the dark corners of the internet, all those types of terms, you lift up your finger and you say, excuse me, I may be mistaken, but I'm not crazy. Exactly. That statement will turn your ship around because it puts them on notice that you are to be respected and you're not going to tolerate being slimed and called crazy like that. All right. So going back to the story, at this point, I'm four years into being a truther. And I've already gone through stage one, two, and three. Stage two, your family, your friends start escalating their posture towards you. Because th at first they think, oh, you're, you know, Nathan's just going through a phase. He'll, you know, yep. it's just dopey, you know. But after three, six months, and you're still talking about it, they realize he really believes this stuff. Yep. So what they do is they up the ante and they start all issuing what I call decrees and edicts. Mm. Okay. And the decrees and edicts are, that's not true. The moon landing wasn't faked. So they basically start giving you decrees about what is and what isn't. And then they start managing you. So they'll say things like, you know, when we go to my in-law's house, I don't want you to talk about your crazy things. So they start managing you and it becomes a, a very big elephant in the room in the relationship. But if you persist, maybe after a year or two, you typically will get to level three, where they basically issue an ultimatum. And the ultimatum will come in different forms, but basically it will say something like, if you talk about crazy things, I can't have a relationship with you. Yeah. Okay, so that's the place that I'd gotten to. I'd gotten to that place where my wife told me, I don't want you to talk about anything negative or controversial. Now, imagine the impossibility of, of, of uh, you know, providing that to your spouse, never talking about anything negative or controversial. Yeah. It's an impossible thing. And then, you know, don't talk about crazy things. Well, I know your subscribers will, will relate to this. Th th and they've heard this because we all get it. But see, the normie never tells you what crazy is right they only tell you not to talk about crazy things okay so this now brings me to this scenario so now i'm under this like what i call shut up or else order so i can't talk about anything that i think they would think is crazy right <laughs> so uh, we're driving down the road i'm with my wife at that point we're still married my three kids they're like teenagers and I'm noticing the chemtrails in the yeah. sky. It's a six, five o'clock at night, so it's dusk. And the, the sky is like this soupy mess. It's all stringy, eerie clouds from, you know, barium salts and aluminum particulate that they're dumping on us. We're being exterminated like bugs. And it's grievous. And I'm vexed in my soul looking at this nightmarish sunset. It's not pretty to me. Yeah. It's death. Yeah, it's new. It's like a science fiction horror movie. This is going on in my mind. On top of that, I'm noticing that the sun is yellow. It's not it's not yellow. It's white. White. Yeah. And all the research I've done into a simulated sun, you can just Google uh, China launch spends one trillion on simulated sun and they have a launch of one. And then there's all of this companies that create simulated suns. And then there's all this evidence to show that they're using 
technology to put a simulated sun up because there's a nebula or Nibiru or whatever is blocking the sun. And it's this is all these things going through my mind. Wow. Okay. And at that, and then of course, the sun is coming out down in the in the kerpatual or whatever the term is, the the uh rays are going on an angle, which proves that the sun is local. It's not 93 million miles away because if it was the the beams would be coming straight down. And at that moment, my daughter says, Oh, dad, isn't the sunset beautiful? <laughs> and then they all start saying, Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh. So in my mind, I'm thinking, don't say anything, don't say anything, yeah. don't say anything. <laughs> right? Because, oh, you're towards your poor mind is being tortured right. at that moment, man. <laughs> because as truthers, you know, we're so urgent. Truthers have to jump in when truth is being trampled like that. Yeah. But I, I'm at the point where it's so it's such a um polarized topic. There will be absolutely no good in me actually saying any of this stuff so i really only have four options i either have to remain silent which creates kind of an awkward silence i have to agree with them and now listen to this agreeing with them means i have to pretend i believe the way they do so i'm told don't talk about crazy things and then i'm asked to talk about crazy things but i'm in, in a way, I'm being asked to give them the opinion that they want, not what I actually believe. It's right. it's my line. It's my boundary. I won't do that anymore. Yeah. So I'm only either going to be silent. I'm not going to talk to them about it because that's World War Three, and I'm trying to stay in their life. Right. Right. Or right. option three is I can tell them what I actually think, which is not an option. <laughs> Or the last option is I can let them know, hey, this is actually, um, I'll say, I'll say, I, I've been asked not to talk about anything negative or controversial, so I can't really talk to about the sunset. Yeah, I'm starting to use that response a little bit more because, because it's raining red pills now, and yeah, you know, they're coming to me more and more with things that are crazy. Mm -hmm. It's all yeah. around us. Yep. And yep. I'm not I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying, hey, you know what? That's I was asked by you not to talk about anything negative and controversial. So I really can't talk to I I want to be in your life. I'd love to help help guide you into adulthood, but you've censored me. So now the things that I've tried to share with you and prepare you for years ago are now happening. But I can't talk to you about them. So <laughs> I, I, that's really where we're at. And I believe though. You know what's slowly going to happen is it's going to be dawn on them. Hey, Dad, maybe Dad wasn't crazy after all. Yeah, it's going to come from another source. Yep. And then they're going to be like, "Wait, my dad was talking about this six years ago, or three, or last month." You know. Yep. <laughs> it's true though. Dave, it's happening right. now. It's happening right now with us, with a lot of us, with with oh friends. Gosh. I've had friends come to me, and they're talking to me now, and they didn't want to talk to me when i started this podcast uh and, and and like nothing happened because they're seeing it now man. yeah right now we've been told now I, there's always like four or five levels of truth whenever they show us anything in the data sphere there's always like five six seven levels of truth behind what we're being shown right yeah okay but just in layman's terms on a basic level the the uh official dumb as i call it the central planners mm -hmm. have been have been denying that the aliens are real up until now. Right. Well, they are now saying they are real. We now have uh, Tucker Carlson, uh, like six, seven months ago, did a three part series where the, he said the U.S. government is in possession of, quote, off world technology. Yep. And now they got the three, two or three guys testifying under the Senate hit hearings that they're in possession of what they call biologicals. And the lady's like, are those human remains? And he's like, no. And yep. we have off-world technology is the other term they use. So yep. if that's not a red pill, I don't know what is. I mean, that's and if you guys aren't watching this stuff, you have to, 
they this stuff is live on daily basis i I put it on when i'm at work i have it on uh Mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the computers and it's it's a live stream all day from c-span and and then the the different government public channels you can watch this stuff i mean it's <laughs> it's really happening it's it's crazy it's it, i don't know i don't know I'm, i think Werner von braun was uh the head of nasa they brought him and a bunch of other ones under project paperclip uh to start nasa Yep. Back in the and 90s, World War II. His secretary, or there was some person in his little satellite of him who said that Werner said that the last card they're going to play is the alien in invasion, Project Bluebeam. Exactly. And it seems like they're playing it, so we must be getting close to uh, go time. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And that and that's what I and I try to, to tell people, too, is, uh, okay, you're seeing it come out now, but why you know now we got to ask why and that's exactly there's you know project blue beam um there's you know the fake alien invasion like you were saying that was supposed to happen if hillary clinton became the president yeah uh, <laughs> right that's right so well they did they did have to push back their timetable klaus schwab admitted that that they pushed their timetable back to 2030 and it's because of people like you nathan and myself exactly. that have you know, taking that step of faith and, and put their necks on the lines to to stand for truth. And, and so we uh, that's why they're trying to censor us. And these people are not all powerful. They they don't right. have all power. They have to get us to go along with these scenarios and deceive us and get us compliant. And so the truth matters, man. These things are really yeah. important that we do. So I'll, my hat's off to you, man. That's awesome. Same to you, man. Um, let's get uh, a little bit into the Mandela effect. Uh, sure. I'm, I'm really curious to hear um, your side of this because I covered this, um, I think, uh, my last season, uh, uh, episode 205, I think. And uh, But I came from the physical kind of pop culture like side of it where, you know, uh, the Berenstein Bears book is 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 now spelled different, you know, yeah. or it, it was Jiff peanut butter and now it's Jiffy or is it Jiff, which, you know, which one is it kind of thing. But you have uh, kind of a unique uh, 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 thing that I haven't seen yet because the Bible, you're you're into the Bible. Um, you probably know it very well and you're seeing things being changed in it. Right. I mean, yeah. I, I, I saw this some, I don't know what, social media it was but I, I i saw this not too long ago where uh uh somebody had an old uh a bible from their family and then they had they bought a new bible and they were doing this and they they were turning to scriptures and they were showing where maybe even just one word was changed or a, a couple words that completely changed the dynamic of of that sentence uh <laughs> And then I found you uh, with this information, and oh my gosh, man! <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a game changer. Yeah, so uh, you know, can you talk to me a little bit about what's going on with the Bible? Right. So, um, I mean, I have like close to five thousand subscribers, and there's other channels with hundred thousand, and so my my research indicates that there's millions of Christians that are claiming this phenomenon, and the unconvinced will try to tell us that it's just misremembering. So they're trying, but the problem is the unconvinced are experiencing the same thing we are. So what that means is it's not psychosis. Psychosis is like if I'm seeing pink elephants in the room. So I'm not seeing things that aren't there because I can go to a hundred pastors and stump them 10 out of 10, 20 out of 20. All right, so the way you know that's a phenomenon is if you had a pilot who had an exemplary record he'd flown with the airline for 30 years he's not on drugs and he, he's not having he has no mental illness and you gave him a quiz of 10 basic instrument questions like what's the name of the instrument that allows you to fly level what what is your expectation nathan how many do you think that the pilot would get right if you could had to identify what the all he had to do is identify what the uh instrument does I would, I would hope he would get them all right, right? <laughs> I don't think he could have been a pilot if he couldn't get them all right, okay? Yeah. Now, let's take a doctor. A doctor went to med school, practiced 30 years. You're going to give him 10 basic 
anatomy questions. Like, what's the name of the skin? The epidermis. Correct. All right. So how many is the doctor going to get right, do you think, out of 10? Oh, he'll get them all right. All right. So now I'm going to go to another content expert. His chosen vocation is the ministry. He went to Bible school. He's been in ministry for 30 years. I'm going to give him 10 basic Bible questions, not like the book of Ezekiel. Okay. I'll give you two examples. Judge not, blank ye be judged. The entire world remembers, judge not, lest you be judged. Right. Okay, that scripture has never existed in any translation, King James or any other one. Hmm? It, it's always been, judge not, that ye be not judged. Hmm. All right, another very familiar one is, uh, the Lord gives and the Lord what? Uh, taketh the way. Right. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away has never existed in the King James Bible. It's now the Lord gave and the Lord shall take away. Hmm. I could do this for the next 30 minutes. And we'll, no, I'll go to, I'll go to a hundred pastors and I'll say, pastor, who laid down with the lamb in the old Testament? It's a, a the, lion? the lion, right? Well, that's a Isaiah eleven six. A hundred out of a hundred will tell you lion. If you go to Isaiah eleven six in any translation, you can go all the way back to the sixteen eleven Cambridge version, and it's wolf. No way. Yes way. Okay, now I'm gonna look this right is, now. This is this is the most compelling way that I've. Oh my god, that's crazy! I just did it right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> it says wolf. It says wolf. Yep. Oh, my well, gosh. But the challenge is, if you go to Matthew Henry's commentary, let's say, from 1500, Matthew Henry will be talking about wolf. And so the unconvinced will say, see, Matthew Henry was talking about it, so they're just misremembering. It's always been wolf. Yes, you're correct. It's always been wolf in this timeline. Yeah. But the, the phenomenon is more exotic than you understand. Okay, because what we're saying is, we were in a different timeline or a different consciousness or something yeah. where the Bible was always the lion laid down with the lamb. Now it's changed. It didn't change 20 years ago to wolf. It changed and it's always been, it's actually in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Wolf is in the Dead Sea Scrolls. But yet our memories are so vivid. So let me go back to this doctor, pilot, pastor thing. Pastor... If the doctor gets 10 right and the pilot gets 10 right and the pastor gets 10 wrong and the pastor doesn't have mental illness, because I could do it with 100 pastors, how is it that he's getting 10 wrong? Right. It's a King James only pastor, and I'm talking out of the King James Bible, so it's not a translation issue. I'm talking to him out of the 1611 Cambridge version, so it's not a modernization issue. How is that possible? And their answer is, I don't know. Yeah. The only answer I've gotten is, oh, well, have you ever heard of the telephone game? I'm like, really? Yeah, I know what they're talking about. You're going to go with that? Yeah. Where you you whisper, you, in elementary school, we sat in a circle, you whispered a sentence to the person next to you, and by the time it got back to you, it was something completely different, right? That is really reaching. Because what they're say, suggesting is 50 years ago, some preacher misquoted it and said lion instead of wolf. And then that went through the entire world. It's in all the movies and books and literature and Christians' mouths and pastors' mouths. It's, it's everywhere, right? All right, but that's one guy. But see, all the Christians read their Bible every day. They read their devotional. They listen to people talk about the Bible. They read books about the Bible. They memorize the Bible. We don't just read the Bible. We memorize the Bible. Bible. Yeah. And then we go on Sunday and listen to the guy talk about the Bible. And that's our life, week in, week out. And so you're going to tell me that all of those influences, seven or eight different inputs in my life, for my entire life, somehow were overcome by this one guy 50 years ago. No. 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 It's a phenomenon. Okay, yeah. now here's the, here's the other bombshell question. Because the number one argument is that we're misremembering. All right, so the Bible, God commands us eight different times to remember in the Bible. Communion is predicated on remembering. 
God commands you, remember the commandments of the Lord. Okay, so here's my question. And I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news that this is happening. But do you agree, would you agree that if God commands us to remember eight different times, that that would be an indication that the human memory would have to be very reliable over long periods of time? Yes yeah. or no? Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. So then you just agreed with me that the human memory is reliable. And you can use memory in a court of law to send someone to prison for life. We also have long-term studies proving it's reliable up to 50 years later, up to 70, 80%. So it is reliable. It's a lie. It's, right. a, it's a slough off. It's not true. Okay. So if it's not misremembering and these pastors don't have mental illness, I think it was Sherlock Holmes said, if you've eliminated all the different options and the only one left, even if it's unlikely, it's, the, it's that one. <laughs> it's, it's what we're telling you. Now, yeah. the good news is that this is happening, but it doesn't impugn God's infinite perfections in any way. God is not a liar, sir, ma'am. Okay, this is a judgment from God. It's 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 the agency of the devil. It's Revelation 13. God gave the devil permission to do this. Revelation 13 gives the Antichrist both permission and power to wage war against the saints and to prevail against them. Okay, Daniel 7:25, speaking of the Antichrist, says that that he will be able to change times and laws. It's clearly an end times prophecy. And if you interpret that, the word laws is actually used in Ezra 7. It's translated the law of God. So if you, it's fair to say that that passage actually says that he will change space time and the Bible. Then there's other passages that give us solid biblical permission to override all of the scriptures that are used to suggest that the Bible could not change. Which, by the way, there's a difference between the term word of God and the term scripture. And that's what the, the fallacy is, is yes, the word of God is immutable. Okay, what was given to the original authors will come to pass and it will not change. However, that is not the same as the scriptures, which are, they don't have a force field around if that was true, we wouldn't have the New World Translation, which denies every major doctrine of the Bible, or the LBGT Bible, or all these different perversions, because they would have been vaporized. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you think, why would, uh, why do you think God would give um, that type of authority to change that on his people? Uh and why do you think we're going through this uh, at this time um, and seeing these things that you're you're mentioning about the Mandela effect and 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 these words being changed in the Bible? Why would he allow that? Would be my question. Yeah, no, it's a great question. Um, and I've struggled with this because this event does introduce a variety of very difficult biblical paradoxes, which are unanswerable this side of eternity. <laughs> so I don't have the answers. Yeah. However, what I have seen is that God does, uh, he does have um, redemptive judgment. Like if God sends a man to hell, it's only punitive. There's no redeeming that man from hell. It's only to exact God's honor back from him, which he wasn't able to receive from that man. But in this realm, God's judgments are very often done to bring us back to him so he makes our path very difficult so we'll stop you know dorking around so my my belief is that this event which is not god doing it but it is just like the cha uh, job chapter one god bragged on job said he was a, he was a righteous man and he excused evil but we very are clearly told that he then allowed satan to mess with job so it wasn't God doing it, but God lifted the hedge. So this is a similar thing. Okay, so so what happened was Jesus came, and the Pharisees didn't even recognize God was standing in front of them. So they were very learned in the law and the things of God, but they didn't know God. 
And I believe that in a similar way, a lot of Christians have a very cerebral, intellectual relationship with the Bible, and they've substituted actually knowing God for knowing the Bible, because it's a lot easier to have another Bible study and pack in a bunch of more info than to actually, you know, give up your bosom sins and stop sinning and, and give God your actually your heart. And so this is God's way of removing that crutch, that idol. It seems counterintuitive, uh, but, you know, it's actually quite common. You got Jesus was walking on the road and, and there was two disciples and, it, and the Bible says he acted as though he would go further. Jesus was pretending he was going to walk past them. Why? Because he wanted to draw them out. He wanted to see if they would pursue him. So when you stop eating for three days, when you finally come back and you have some chicken soup, you don't offer some religious fleshly prayer, prayer out of obligation. You're like, thank you, God. <laughs> yeah. You're like truly grateful. Yes. And so if this is really happening, God is removing this, this epicenter of our religion and then, and then leaving us only with a desperation for him. The thief on the cross didn't have the Bible. He was able to make it in. Many, many Christians in foreign persecuted lands, I, I've talked to missionaries. The pastor of the church will have one page of the Bible. That's it. And these guys are raising the dead, and they're just getting the sick healed, tons of people getting saved. I'm not advocating that we don't need the Bible or shouldn't have it. I'm just right. reporting on what's happening. Right. Right. And it's irrefutable. There, I, I created a video called The Seven Mandela Effect Questions That the Unconvinced Cannot Answer, thereby proving the Bible is supernaturally changing. So this debate is now over. There is no question that's happening. And I have a standing invitation for debates. So if you're listening to me and you pounding the table and want to assign me to the seventh circle of hell, I would gladly invite you to contact me at pleasewakeuporelse at gmail.com and we'll schedule a 90-minute debate. You and go. you will not do well. I'm there just you telling go. you. <laughs> it's out there. There's the offer. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, and, and and it's, oh my gosh, what you're saying makes so much sense. And and um, to kind of go back to say, uh, you know, God's allowing this to happen uh, to bring people back to him, uh, that is, I mean, that's, that's so, uh, real because what happens when, you know, I just think back from personal experiences, like when, you know, frightening things happen in your life or when, uh, uh, you're, you're on hard times or something, what is, what is the first thing that you do, yeah. whether you're a person who prays or has attended church regularly or what <laughs> you start going back to church you start saying please god if you yes. can help me here this and this you know and, and and you believe it you believe it then and you believe it in that moment but it's it's it's, it's connecting so awesome in my mind right now what you're saying because it's exa exactly true and i could now see i mean that's a good way to put it like you know why are we seeing the bible change because with the you know pestilence or whatever word you want me to use or the things we're seeing today going on you it's it's no gray anymore it's black or white at this point you're either on board uh with with a god with a creator with a heaven uh or you're not yeah or, you know <laughs> so i i uh i totally agree uh with what you're saying that's 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 insane I, I love how you connected that um what what do you think like these timelines how did we get how do we get on this timeline because i i remembered stuff differently and and seeing it in a new way how is our how do you think our consciousness i know these are huge questions but yeah 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 how do you well, think our absolutely. consciousness is is still there but we're on another timeline is that cern or is that something more supernatural What's going on? How, how it's you... really a mind bender. Uh, <laughs> I know. I mean, we've gone down this road so many times in so many conversations with so many smart people. I mean, I've talked to people that are light years ahead of me in their understanding of quantum physics, in in 
th things of, of Christianity in all the mathematics. And basically, there's only some people that know what's going on. The most of us have no clue. We only know what it isn't. It isn't a naturalistic thing. But you can, right. oh, I have people tell me, oh, I can clear this up for you, John. You're just confusing the platter's peanut guy with the Monopoly guy. I'm like, no, no. Here's here's question number two for my seven questions. Okay, your, your name is Nathan. So let's say you woke up one morning and your name is Nick. Okay, it's yeah. not Nathan now. Your bank statements say it's Nick. Everything, your driver's license, everybody knows you as Nick. And, and you go to the doctor, you get checked up. You don't have mental illness. You go to the pastor, you don't have a demon, okay? So you rule that out. All right, so, but you have this faculty of the soul called certainty. And you're like, I don't care what the data sphere says. I know what my name is, bro, right? right. Well, my name is Nathan. So here's my question. This is question number two. Would you consider that scenario that I just outlined a phenomenon? Yes or no? Yes. It's a phenomenon. Yes. It's unexplainable. It's unexplainable. Okay, so here's my point for the unconvinced. Not all of the memories that we have, but many of them are as vivid as our names, which means what we're experiencing is a phenomenon, just like I just said in that scenario. It's yeah. not misremembering. And and stop saying that because your unresearched answers are embarrassing to you. All right. It's not misremembering and it is a phenomenon. And so then what we require of you is if you cannot give us an explanation for the phenomenon that we're experiencing with our Bibles, then we're forced to come to the only logical conclusion, which is there it is changing. Now, how it's changing, okay. There are a number of, of variety of, of uh, theories. Okay, first of all, you have the timeline, basically, it's your theory. Okay, so you have time streams that, uh, you know, human consciousness is not really understood. We have a brain, but the brain is the organic computer. It's made of matter. The mind is a metaphysical construct of the brain, right? It's an electrical field. Yeah, basically like consciousness yeah consciousness is actually different from the mind in a way it's, it's a bigger it's like right it's, a, it's like our connection with god right totally not not okay. only that but like you have people like david talmud who is a savant and he was on david letterman and just to give you an example uh he memorized pi out to twenty five thousand digits it took him 20 it took him two weeks and he, he sat in MIT in a table with seven people and he recited pi 1.36, blah, 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 blah. It took him seven and a half hours. He did not make one mistake. Wow. I can probably go past like 20 digits. This was 25,000 digits. Okay. So he's on Letterman and Letterman goes, all right, what is this number? Uh, we understand you could do credible math things. So 86,553.7 times 223,553.6. And he goes like this. He takes his finger and he just doodles on the cha armchair. And then he goes 45,553,943.6. Now, it didn't take him any longer than that. So Letterman's like, how did you do that? And this is what he said. He goes, well, I just see a landscape and the number appears. I'm wow. like, what? Wow. Okay, so what is that? Yeah, where's that coming from? What is, well, there's many theories in different civilizations, like the acoustic records, concept, right. which is this supposed, uh, you know, accessing the quantum realm where all knowledge is there and you can access it, which there's all kinds of research to support that quantum entanglement and all that stuff. So you can, the human consciousness can tap into it. So maybe somehow the, you know, I do believe that CERN and the D-Wave computers are responsible for this. I could be totally wrong. No, I don't I'm, believe it's I'm anyone. But, but the reason I actually believe that now is because research done by Cliff High, who created this spider that goes out onto the web. Uh, and it actually, he's a linguist and a computer programmer 
and he created this thing to go out and look for uh, uh, discussions about stocks that would then give him an edge where he could invest in stocks before they went up. Hmm. And, and what he found was humans were minorly clairvoyant, he said. And so these results started coming back, which were totally unrelated to stocks, where predictions were being made in the data set. And I watched this happen because uh, I, I started following him about five years ago. And one of them that he predicted from the data set was there was a lake in Peru that was going to empty out overnight. Mm. And I'm sitting here as God is my witness, people. I'm telling you, like, it was only like four months later, a lake in Peru emptied out overnight. That's insane. Bro, it was so insane. And so there was like three or four of those that I watched him say, and then it ha they happened. And so then he pointed his thing at the cryptocurrencies and I started buying his thing every month. <laughs> right? So right. what's my point? Okay, my point is that he has some creds, all right? So what he did was he pointed his spider thing at the Mandela effect. Mm. And what he showed was pretty compelling. Okay, wow. what he showed was that the, the, there are certain places where these D-Wave computers are located, like Columbia has one, Google has one, University of California, well, wherever they're located, his spider showed that the, the concentration of reports of the Mandela effect effects was much more concentrated. They what was like this guy's name? Cliff High. Okay, I, I've heard of him, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So... So that for me um, was pretty compelling that the D wave. So then, if you understand how the D wave works, it uses qubits. And, and uh, the guy, uh, Ronnie, no, uh, what's his name? He works for the company. He, he basically described it where they, they, they deposit, they deposit the, whatever they call it, into another dimension, and then they bring back the answer. So they're, they're, they're basically saying that this is an interdimensional technology. Because at the quantum right. level, that is another dimension. Like a quantum computer, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So in order to uh, for the quantum qubit to work, though, any kind of human consciousness makes it mess up. So mm. remember the, you ever hear the two-slit experiment? No. Okay, this is an experiment supposedly where they were they were analyzing the uh, how uh, particles versus waves uh, function, and so they shot these particles at a at a photo cell, and you would expect that it would just be a dot, two two beams of particles, there would be two dots. Well, right, that's what they were getting, and then they turned the camera on, and suddenly they were getting a, a, an effect like it was waves. I like, have seen this, yes. Okay. So if you drop a pebble in the water, it creates waves that propagate out and then you have a cancellation field. And so all of a sudden when they turn the camera on, that's all the only thing that changed. Observation, now, yeah. Now the thing is acting like it's waves. So they turn the camera off and all of a sudden it's back to particles again. <laughs> yeah. So, what it, so it's kind of like um that movie toy story where the toys are are you know when the humans come they just fall down it's like the opposite it's like the the construct <laughs> the construct is interacting with human consciousness yeah so incredible right all yeah. right so so based on that um um what was i going to say so cliff high's research showed that the the uh qubit had to it, oh, Gordy Rose, that's the guy's name. Okay. The, the qubit had to be isolated from any human consciousness. So they put it into a tube and they bring it down to zero Kelvin, close as they can get to zero Kelvin. But that wasn't even enough. The D wave has to be controlled by a regular computer. And if they just typed in what they wanted the thing to figure out, there was human intent was communicated so they had to j rig it up with this jury rig thing where they type what they wanted it to do and then it would push this lever and it would go two balls would roll down a thing and then it would shoot air and it was bizarre man <laughs> because they had to eliminate any human consciousness in the process of telling the d-wave what to do that's wild so what is the d-wave 
It's a human consciousness vacuum. And out of that area emulates all these Mandela effects. Huh. Because that's what his research shows. Or in and around the D wave are the is where the most concentration of reports of Mandela effects happen. Wow. Just saying. Wow. <laughs> Just saying. Because <laughs> we've all been trying to figure out how it happened. And that's my best guess right there. That that's one of the best I've heard. Yep. <laughs> it really is. That's crazy. Um it's really crazy. And and like because I mean, I've you've always heard, you know, that uh I think it's quantum physics, right? Where if you observe something, it acts different than when it's not being observed, right? So there's kind of some of that yeah in, in that uh as well. And also, right, that's that's like what the, the two slit experiment did. They yeah. proved that that human observation changed how the construct, the, the underlying construct of reality was functioning. But um, oh, I forgot what I was going to say now. The, the, um, let's see. Um, no, that's okay. Um, so, totally so these, so, yeah, ex- no, no, you're fine. Um, so these experiments are basically, um, I mean, they're giving us a good good idea of of what the Mantella effect is and how and how it's happening, and that we are our consciousness is staying on the same wavelength per se. It's it's the consciousness is truth, the consciousness is 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 steady, uh, but because of these manipulations that are going on um, in in the ether and other, I don't, I don't know how you want to term it, other dimensions or whatever. Uh, I guess maybe the the strongest one is is the one that we end up finding ourselves on. If that makes any sense, All right, let's go to the next philosophy. The okay. next philosophy is not a timeline, but it's a parallel universe. Now, as Christians, we tend to have a real problem with this idea because if you if you take the Bible literally, then all men will stand before God and. On judgment day and so how can there be an infinite number of johns that are going to stand before god that's a really difficult theological thing to, to reconcile however the the idea that there's parallel universes and that's what we're experiencing does help me a lot because what we're experiencing are things like i was just talking to my friend my friend is a commercial helicopter pilot Okay, so this is not some teenager living in his mom's basement. This is a highly educated professional, high rate, highest rating a commercial uh, helicopter. So, so, and he's got a channel. It's Awakened Saints called. Okay, so he he's lives in this town his whole life, and one day he goes for gas <laughs> at this gas station that was always an Exxon, and he pulls up, and it's like a Sunoco. No, and he's like, what? I mean, it's like his name changed, right? This is as absolutely certain as anything that has ever happened in his life. So he goes in and he's like, when did they change this to a Sunoco? And he, and the girl goes, honey, I'm a manager. Here. I've been here 10 years. Oh, yeah. So wait, he went on like a Thursday and it was, um, you know, whatever, Speedway. And then he goes on Friday and it's a, <laughs> it's a Sunoco. Right. Now, so so I, he and I drilled down on this one to try to get our heads around the logistics of this. All right. Now, if it's a timeline thing, it's a lot more difficult to reconcile. But if it's a parallel universe, it's a lot easier because basically I'm in universe one where there's an Exxon where Joe is the manager for the last 10 years. And I just go boop over to this parallel universe. Well, now it's, it's, there's, there's a Sunoco and it's always been a Sunoco in that universe. Yeah. If you come back to this universe and think of it as a video game, okay, if you got a cheat code in a video game, you can just press control X and all of a sudden Zolar has the sword of Goron in his hand, right? Oh, yeah. right. There's something. Yeah. It's just a cheat code. Bing. All right. So, so is the construct actually morphing? Is our construct malleable? Well, we sort of know it is, right? This table that I'm sitting at appears solid to me, but it's actually an energy construct. 
It's yeah. made of, I mean, there's no like a little grain of sand in the molecule. The molecule is only a point of energy <laughs> with other points of energy. So they say that the Higgs boson field is what gives uh, gives things an apparent solidity, what makes us perceive it as solid. But then we see that law being suspended in the Bible, like where Jesus walked through the walls or the axe head floated or Philip was translated down the road 30 miles in the book of Acts. So the construct is malleable, but we don't know if that's what's happening or if we're shifting to an actual different universe or if it's just in a consciousness shift, but right. that's difficult because we're not experiencing the same thing. So somehow we're perceiving it differently when it's still the same. I don't believe that. I don't believe it's an implanted thought either. Yeah, so, so there, there's a guy uh, um, on on Instagram who uh, his his username is Book of Jonah. I don't okay. know if you've seen him, but no. he talks about how uh, in his in his videos he talks about how the um, we're living in a matrix, and like you were saying, there's cheat codes. It's hackable, and he gives out number sets occasionally for different things like. You know, happiness, it's it's you know, some certain number set. And uh if you see this on license plates, it's some certain uh, it means a certain thing. And 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 I, I'm still trying to kind of wrap my my head around where he his angle at stuff and how he's doing stuff, but uh I mean I find that kind of relatable. Uh, you know, that you know there are ways apparently some people believe to to manipulate this uh this matrix. And uh, I wanted to ask, um, do you believe we can jump on these timelines? Do you think, you know, you know, like your friend, you think we can fall fall asleep and intentionally tell ourselves we want to be in a certain timeline or with certain things and, and wake up to that reality in our in our conscious uh, with our consciousness attached, I should say? I have seen evidence that there is certain uh, potential for us to manifest some of these changes. Some of them that we've talked about have then happened. Uh, one friend noticed Noah changed to Noe. There's about 20 different Bible characters whose names have changed in the Bible. Mm. Yeah, I have a long list of those. Here, oh I'll just, yeah. I'll read, since we're on the topic, I'll read the names of the Bible characters that have changed. You ready? Yes. Yes. Jeremiah is now referred to as Jeremy. Noah what? Is Noe. Asher is Asser. Hosea is Osi. Nebuchadnezzar is now called Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, Judah in the New Testament is now Judas. Shem is now Sem. Gideon is now Gedeon. Nephilim oh. is now Nephilim. John the Baptist is referred to as John Baptist. Huh. Elijah is Elias. John is Josie's. Elijah is now called Esaias. No Timothy way. is Timotheus. Manasseh is Manasses. Ephraim is now referred to as Joseph. Zebulon is referred to as Zebulon. And Boaz is referred to as Booz. Oh and what God. we're told is, oh, yeah, that's just how it's translated from the old from the original language into english and we're like is that's what you're gonna go with okay my name is john and i wake up in a gym right you're gonna try to tell me my name has always been jim i'm gonna <laughs> tell you to get lost i'm sorry i'm sorry but god commanded me to remember eight different times remember yeah sorry yep. misremembering's out the window bro i'm sorry yep Yep. It's, it's time to become a conspiracy theorist kook. In <laughs> fact, for all the preachers that might come across this podcast, all right, I don't believe that you can possibly properly minister to your congregants in this day and age unless you're a conspiracy theorist kook nut job. And the proof of that is all the preachers that lined up and followed Fauci into the white coat uh, Freemason scientism narrative and they've masked up all their congregants and they even pushed the vax on them and killed them off shame on you yes okay it's time to wake up and realize that you're just a mind control victim like the rest of us and yeah. have one good despair and get it over with yeah 
We've all been fooled. These people are experts. They're masters yeah. of illusion. Exactly. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm with you, man. I'm. <laughs> I mean, I'm 100 with you, man. And, and yes. I know. And, and you know, we all want to be right 100 percent of the time, but we're not. And and it, and and I know there's people in my family who will not wake up, not because they're not uh, intelligent, not because they can't see uh, factual things uh, and, and understand and have critical thought. Uh, it's because they want to be right. And they said one thing 20 years ago, 50 years ago, and they will not abandon that thought. They will not see the forest amongst the trees. Yep. And uh, so... I, I'm right there with you. Let you know, give it up. It's okay. I was wrong, right? I, I was wrong. You were wrong at one point in our, in our lives. We we believed things because we were controlled, like you said. We were mind controlled to believe that stuff, and we did. And then we were happy with our beliefs and our thoughts. But then other stuff comes forward. Uh, other um, facts show themselves. Your own observations come yep. into play. Your own experiences. Your own soul. I believe that your intuition is a real thing that you have, you know, whether you say it's God or whatever um, puts in you and you say this in your book, which is is brilliant too, but um, they put in, he puts in you or God puts in you what's right and wrong from birth. Yeah. Like, like, you know, like we don't need society to tell us what we should do or should not do. When you do something wrong, whether it's, uh, societally seen as something bad, your heart, your soul feels that it's wrong. You have a thing that we call guilt, right? Exactly. And that that happens if you're two years old, or if you're, uh, you know, two hundred years old. It it, it still happens, uh, and and um, you know, so you know, you know, like mm-hmm. a, a two year old knows that they did something bad because they feel it. A, you know, a twenty year old knows they did something wrong. Because because you feel and I think and I think that's what with a lot of the truthers is is we can uh, tap into that as well as look at facts and observations and things. And and we use it all to tell ourselves what the truth is, not what somebody else has told us the truth is. But I'm kind of kind of going on here, but a point and we got and we got to take a break here in like two okay. minutes. Um, All right. And then we'll come back if you want to stay. I'd love to oh, have for you. sure, man. Oh, I'm I'm good to go. I'm <laughs> I'm used to doing long marathons. I'm I'll, go, <laughs> I'll, I'll follow you. Like I said, man, we'll go wherever you want. Oh, that's perfect, man. Yeah, let's do it then, man. I'm, All right. And great. we got to get into um, we got to get into some some of these other topics, too. I want to talk to you about Flat Earth, actually, if you okay. want to go that we can way. Go there. I want to, I want we to need see. to do a break because I want to pick up on something you just said, but we could do. Sure. No, back. go go ahead. We have uh, three minutes. OK, I can do it in three minutes. All right. So so you mentioned in, integrity and I think I mentioned integrity about 30 times in the book. And a lot of truthers ask, why can't my loved ones and friends see? Why can't they see or why can you see? Um, and what I found in my research is the reason is is integrity okay Mm. so what happens and you mentioned the conscience too what happens is let's take the moon landing as an archetype of all conspiracies right you you you're a normie you're just doing life Mm. right yeah and all of a sudden you you know god taps you on the shoulder and he goes uh did you notice that that looks like it's made of curtain rods and cardboard and it has scotch tape on it did you notice that and you go what and so then you do look up a few videos and you find out it's fake all right so at that moment when you see that it's fake, that's the truth, and the conscience is vexed. Your conscience tells you, oh, that's wrong. It's wrong. They're lying. This is not true. Okay, so that's your conscience. That's the devil on one shoulder and the angel on the other. All right, but then what happens is your integrity steps in because you can deny your conscience and just keep rocking. Right. But the truther... And this is a word of encouragement to everybody listening. Truther, good for you. Okay? You've been told you're a kook, and I'm here to tell you that you are right. Congratulations. Great job. You are correct. And thank you for having integrity 
and and choosing the truth no matter where it takes you because that's what defines the truther is they see the truth if you look up the definition of truth it's things that are factual yes okay? and then if you look up the definition of factual do you know what factual means things that are obvious oh, <laughs> oh. so I what's obvious is the lunar rover the lunar lander that whole thing is so ridiculous and so we go, well, that's a lie. And then your integrity, because you know, if you bite down on that, that you're going to get persecuted, right? So, yeah. but because you have integrity, you go, I don't care. I'm going wherever the truth takes me. Whereas the normie, they step back and they're like, oh man, I mean, life is good. You know, I got my happy life. I don't really want a bunch of people jumping in my grill. I'm just going to go and say, well, what difference does it make? I still got to go to work, don't I? Or, you know, you can't believe everything you see on the internet or blah, 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 you know, and they just yeah. take a left turn. Shame yeah. on them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hear you. We're going to be right back here all over. I'm with John Kerwin, uh, the author of the Conspiracy Theory Survival Guide, a guidebook for persecuted truthers. And we're going to be back right after this. Stay tuned. Sean, I got John Kerwin sitting here. Uh, I've been talking about uh, some awesome topics here. Mandela effect. Um, we talked a little bit about um, some biblical uh, changes, uh, some names that have been changed in the Bible from what uh, most of us uh, remember growing up. If you grew up uh, in the church or at least are familiar with, with the Bible, uh, talking about some conspiracies, uh, well, what they call conspiracies, but as John mentioned earlier, conspiracy theory is a made-up term um, that was made up by the CIA to throw you off so that you wouldn't critically think. Um, so I don't like to use it. We use it uh, because that's what's the familiar term, unfortunately, but uh, it's more like uh, critical critical thoughts and critical theory. Um, but we're back here, um, and John, welcome back. Uh, I did want to talk uh, to you. I know you... Uh, are on this uh, kind of conspiracy theory too. I know you said you're kind of down all the rabbit holes and one of them was flat earth. So uh, a lot of people, it's it's hard for them to uh, conceive of something like that. And to be honest with you, I'm, I'm still not a hundred percent there. Um, but there's, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot that, uh, I don't know. There's a lot of, what i'm trying to say like different facts or different um theories that uh are covered under the flat earth so let me just say it like that so when you say flat earth there even in the flat earth community that means different things from my experiences yes so from your let's start there from your theory or from your mindset frame of reference what is flat earth is it literally when you say I'm a flat earther, what does that mean? Well, it means it means that <laughs> you no longer accept the narrative that the earth is a ball, but instead it's a flat stationary plane. Okay. Because that's what our eyes see. You know, if the earth is round, where's the curve? Because 
you know, lighthouses would not work on a round earth because there's, you know, you can see a lighthouse 50 miles away at night, according to mariners, and there should be like 1500 feet of curvature. If the earth is 2600 miles around or 26,000 miles around, two inches per mile squared, it would be 1500 feet of curvature and the tallest lighthouse is like 400 feet. So hmm. everywhere you go, you can see 50 or 100 miles, which yeah. would be impossible. It's not just one place. Um, but I did a video that addresses every known argument against being able to see long distances. It's on my channel. It's called Round Earth Mind Control. And let me just go back before you get into like empirical observations to try to prove the point. Yeah. What you really have to do is step back and unpack some of the mind control uh, processes that get you to where you can't see the evidence. Okay. okay. So in other words, a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. Mm -hmm. I think uh, somebody said it's easier to fool somebody than to convince them they've been fooled. Right. And flat earth is so huge that I think we already talked about it, how pride steps in and says, I would have to be really stupid for them to be able to have convinced me the earth is flat or round when it's actually flat. Yeah. Okay. So let me just, let me put you on the spot. And I did this on my own channel. Okay. All right. So if we Google, uh, you could do this right on your phone. Just Google picture of the Milky Way galaxy. Okay. And you'll it'll come up. Can you do it right now while you're looking? Yeah, I'm doing All it right, right now. Yeah. So go, you're going to Google picture of the Milky Way galaxy, and you should get a bunch of pictures. One of them's from NASA. Just click on that one. Okay. Hold on one second. Uh, I got ooh, pixels, Wikipedia. Hold on one second. I probably have to. Google Images. You should be able to get a picture from NASA of the, of the Milky Way. Yeah, I have weird filters on my computer. One second, let me <laughs> let me get over here. Uh, okay, picture of the Milky Way galaxy from. Okay, there it is. Okay, so what are you looking at? Okay, so I have a picture. It looks like um, a light source in the middle, and there's a bunch of swirls going around, coming out to uh blackness and so it's a, the whole galaxies in the frame so so what how'd they get the picture i don't know Sa well, satellite, a satellite in another in, an, in another galaxy yeah I, I see your point i really do i mean well follow me on this go okay. with me. i don't mean to put you on the spot or anything but this is this is important so that's what we're looking at so if the if the if the whole galaxy is in the frame, we're told it's a hundred thousand light years across and ten thousand light years wide. How did they get the picture? Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, it's 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 not a honest. It's a it's a rendition of what they would think, or is is it another galaxy? Well, they will tell you that they'll tell okay. you this because we can't see it from within they'll show you another but they don't really tell you that right now I, I i so basically what you're saying is it's not a picture of the galaxy i don't think it's saying? yeah it's not it's a it's a rendition of somehow it's a fake picture it's a cartoon and they call yeah. it an image and an image is a, a a simulation of the real thing so it's a cartoon okay it's fake yeah now i did a survey on my live stream with a hundred people and these are truthers and 70 out of 100 admitted that that live stream was the first time they ever realized that that picture of the galaxy was a cartoon. Unbelievable. I couldn't believe it was that many. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so do you believe that the Earth's core is molten? So I the, the jury is out on that because I have no uh, uh, evidence or facts that it is. And nobody does because nobody's been to the center of the Earth. Correct. But scientism is prepackaged lies delivered by freemason uh, uh uh priests in white lab coats as though it's fact 
Yeah, so I mean, most of it is. I mean, there is some of it is actually based on conjecture. Yes. And then yeah. some of it's true. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So so if you if you the the bore uh cola deep cora deep hole project or whatever it is in Russia, drill, drill down eight and a half miles. That's the deepest human beings have ever gone. Eight and a half miles down. Mm -hmm. And what we're told, we don't know if this is even true, is that the the, the crust is 1,400 miles and then the mantle is 14. So it's 3,000 miles of rock to get to the core. And then what we're told is there's S waves and P waves when an earthquake happens. S waves will travel through liquid, but P waves won't. And so we have people on the other side of the globe that measure whether the P waves or the S waves come through and then we can measure. No, you can't. Now they're saying that they calculate that the Earth's core is molten by measuring the magnetic field around Mars. Do you believe that they can tell that the Earth's core is molten by measuring the molten the, the magnetic core around Mars? No, and I and I also don't believe that the core stopped and switched rotation because if if their science is right and that happened, we would all have died right when that happened. Thank you. <laughs> right. So the only right. So let me just finish yeah. this transition. So so the picture of the galaxy is a cartoon, the Earth's core, and they tell you like over here in these thousand articles that that's what it is. But then if you ask them specifically, how do we know the Earth's core is molten? They'll tell you, well, we don't. But over here, they will, they'll tell you the Earth's core is molten. That's scientism. They gaslight and lie to you. All right, so then the next one, though, is the picture of the Earth. So if you Google picture of earth from space let me see if i can bring it up on our screen here oh yeah that'd be great yeah if you can bring it up on the screen that'd be even better yeah give me one second here from space let's see if we can't merge this in come on let me know if you can uh see this here can you see that yep perfect. okay all right so yeah grab that one Okay. Perfect. All right. So now this is not actually a NASA picture because it's got stars. So go back out. Yeah. That's not a real one. That's what it would actually look like, or <laughs> you know, if it was real. So you want one like the the one next to it is probably the uh, big you know, blue marble. Universe of today. Earth from space. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So so what you're looking at. All of our life, we've been told that this is a picture from space, but NASA admits that it's actually 12 strips of data that are sewn together. And then they add uh, colors and clouds to give us what we would expect, is what mm -hmm. they say. Mm -hmm. And that's Mr. Big Blue Marble, um, Robert Simmon. He is the guy that admits in an article that what you're looking at is a cartoon. And now the reason that people get so indignant when you try to talk about flat earth is because they they think, well, what are you talking about? You're a joke. You know, we have pictures from space. Hmm. <laughs> That's what they say. And what they don't realize is the evidence that they're basing their certainty on is fraudulent. Yeah. That picture of the Earth from space is a cartoon. It's 12 strips of data that was sewn together. And what is so ironic, Nathan, is that truthers are always accused of being tricked by Photoshop tricks. And it turns out that the normie is the one that's tricked by Photoshop tricks. <laughs> yeah, well, we all had, we all were at one point, right? Yes. If you're born looking at this image, and our parents were born with this same image, uh, there's no generation on the earth that the, they were born, uh, well, that I know of that are alive that were born with another uh, right. rendition of this. So, but my thing is, this is my thing. I, what if it's not flat, but it's just way bigger than they told us? What if on the other side of the Arctic uh, wall, there are more uh, continents that they don't want us to know so that it might be 10 times bigger than we think? And uh, they just don't want to show us that. So they cut that out 
they do their little 12 strips and they make this image right here to hide what might possibly be be down here. Well, that, that may be, but it still doesn't explain why we can see for 50 or 100 miles everywhere we go. There, every scientific experiment, peer-reviewed thing that has ever been attempted to measure the curve has proven that it's flat. And wherever you go, it's flat. So if it's round, why is it flat? But if it's if it's ten times bigger than your observation, you it, it's it's going to obviously enlarge <clears throat> the the distance it would take for it to show curvature. Right, right? but even even when we go up with uh, uh, you know personal balloons, like balloons. Not, yeah. not sent up by NASA, the the horizon stays right at eye level the whole time. No matter how big the planet would be, if it was round. As you go higher, you'd have to look down to see the horizon if it was curving away, and you never do. the uh, The horizon always stays at eye level as high as we've gone, as far as 130, 40 miles up. You all you can see is flat all the way around. It's only NASA that has fisheye lenses that makes it look curved. Yeah, like from the ISS and stuff like that, yep. or the supposed ISS. Well, I mean, we know that uh, that all the the footage from uh, the walks on the moon and stuff that's all done under water at a facility yeah in florida i mean that's <laughs> so, yeah uh and in uh i believe it's in texas or arizona there's another one i can't remember. i think it's texas yeah um <laughs> but uh yeah that was my only my only hold up is is also um so what if it's if it's a flat plane um like i, I guess like what would be the point for them to lie to us like what the, I, there's other things that are more important i think to where why is that why do you think that's such a big thing that this even in the truth or community uh that we argue about this and that uh it's such a big thing what i mean oh that's a great question it's a common question and if you ask yourself that same question when you look at the picture of the monkey to the man right which they put in front of us since kindergarten and they're still putting it in front of kids. So you got a picture of the monkey, and then he's getting a little bigger, and then he's standing straight up, and it's us, right? Except so, for in the new pictures, he has a dress on. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so why? Well, first of all, if, if you uh, do you believe that's true? Do you believe in evolution? Or no. do you believe you're created by God? I believe I'm created by God. Uh, and then I believe there is, I, I do think we evolved because life is always uh moving and switching and adapting but it, it's it we don't go from one species to another species we've always been uh what we are yeah. yes there's no transitory evidence in the fossil records okay so if you're looking at the monkey to the man picture you believe that's a conspiracy correct yes in other words the people that are at the top of that know that that's not true and we know that is because piltdown man was a was proven to be fake yeah. where they took a pig's nose and they created this wax figure of a Neanderthal and they paraded it around all the museums for like 20 years before they realized it proved that it was fake. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to push this agenda, which is what? You're not it's, created by God. Yeah. There is no God. Okay. Yeah. Well, the flat earth is the monkey to the man on steroids. All right. Because instead of, instead of what we actually have, which is you have, a snow globe environment that is the center of everything there is no galaxies and star trek and hundreds of species and all this stuff and trillions of light years none of that's true what's above the dome is water it's totally different than what you've been we've all been led to believe yeah that's what i've heard yeah the earth is god's footstool god's up there and you are the apple of his eye Okay, what happens then is if you if you find out there's a dome, because what I always believed and was told is billions of years ago, the earth was just gases and it was spinning and it's spinning and spinning and it got started to cool and then it became solidified and then, you know, the oceans formed and blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, that's uniformitarianism over long periods of time, all these things evolved and blah, blah, blah. But there's no God. It's all random chance. It's a godless cosmology. That's why they want to push the flat earth. Because, or the round earth. 
Because if you found out there was a dome over this flat plane, how are you going to spin that, that that happened by chance? Mm. It has to be created. Right. Yeah. Well, that's what the word firmament means. And God set the firmament in the sky. Firmament means a hard, impenetrable barrier. So I'm sorry, but I'm a Bible believer. <laughs> I actually believe the Bible. And then Job, it says, is not the sky as hard as glass? Meaning the firmament. Yes. And how could you have a, a, a high pressure uh, atmosphere without a barrier? If there is space, which is a vacuum, supposedly, and there's no barrier, all of the atmosphere will be sucked out. It's like oh, yeah, there's a geodome or whatever they consider it. The 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 thing that apparently has a hole in it that's protecting our atmosphere from the vapors of space. Um that's supposed to be, you know, what's going on. And and it's the same on both the flat earth and the round world theory, right? I mean, they they both claim that there's something preventing us from having the space debris and, and stuff come into our atmosphere, right? Well, no, what I'm talking about is the, the atmosphere is a pressure envelope around the earth. It's under water pressure. Above. Like, okay. well, this, no, this is what the, the, the uh, official narrative is, is that you have a ball and then there's this film around it, which is under pressure, but the, then there's a vacuum. So if you have a can of hairspray, it's under pressure. That's our atmosphere. If you poke a hole in the can of hairspray, what happens? All the pressure equalizes Releases. so that it's the same as the outside pressure yeah. immediately. Yeah. Right. But what we're being asked to believe is that the hairspray is just sitting there in the midair without any kind of barrier around it. And it's maintaining all of its pressure. And the, what's holding it is gravity. And we're like, no, that's ridiculous. Yeah. The reason that there's atmosphere is because there is a barrier. There's a dome, just like the Bible teaches. And this is the great sin of the church, is that they have sided with the white coat scientism Freemason people over Moses, who told us there's a, a firmament. They're gonna go with they're gonna go with Bill Nye the science guy and Neil Cut the Grass Tyson instead of Moses. Yeah. Because they don't know their Bibles. And they call us biblically illiterate. No, you, sir, are biblically illiterate. <laughs> yeah. So, so what, what, what is this water above us then? If there's a firmament and there's water, is, is, is it another, is it just repeating like as above, so below kind well, of thing? If you look at it through a Nikon P51 or whatever it is, yeah. at, at, you can look at Saturn and the different planets. They look like flickering Christmas lights underwater. And the, if you read the account of Genesis, when God sent the flood, it says, in the, and the gates of heaven opened and the water came down. It's very clear that we're in a dome over which is water. Mm. It's totally different than what we've been led to believe. Mm. Totally that's, different. That's... So mind-bending. And so what happened was when Admiral Byrd went down there to the Antarctic, they sent him down there on this expedition uh supposedly he went into the center of the earth he met the master and this whole thing happened where he was flying and then all of his instruments went wookie and then there was yeah. two spaceships with nazi insignias on them and they flew him down into the thing Yep. all right so you can believe that or not i don't know what if it's true or not all right so here's my point though um we're told that story that there was a another place beyond the South Pole that was yeah. as big as America. And it was lush and it's all this stuff. Yeah, future technology, all kinds of stuff. Well, right after that, they created the South Pole Treaty. All the governments in the world got together and agreed. Nobody can go down there. Yeah, they did. You can have a little fake tour in the, on the outskirts, but you're not getting <laughs> into the interior. Why is that? Because you'll see the, the foundation of the dome. They don't want you to know the alien technology that's down there or, you know, the, the weather weapons that they got down there or 
the dome that you can see down there because that proves there's a God. That's game over. Yeah. Flat Earth wow. would, would basically be the greatest evangelistic event in human history. Everybody would know there's a God. They can't let that happen. Yeah. That's wow. why that's Flat Earth. Wow. Yeah, that that makes sense. I Doesn't mean, it? It would it be the, it would be absolute proof that God exists because yeah. there's a dome. Yeah. And that's oh, that's what I was gonna say. So so there's two uh uh government projects that were declassified right around that same time. One was uh project um fishbowl, yeah, and oh, project fishbowl. Dominic. Okay? okay. Project Fishbowl and Project Dominic. So fishbowl of the Lord. Dominic means of the Lord. And fishbowl means fishbowl. Yeah. So that those two projects were where they started shooting nukes up into the atmosphere, supposedly to test them. But they were really trying to poke a hole in the dome. Yeah. Yeah. And that's right after that that they created the South Pole. What idiots, man. I'm t- <laughs> it's so just bizarre. Trying, yeah. They're just trying to kill us all, man. I, I mean, know it. What? I know. <laughs> that's it's ridiculous. just... It's just one of the mysteries of how God runs his universe, that the elite are typically wicked and, you know, the church is broke and persecuted. It's, I mean, like, it's like sometimes I'm like, God, if I was running the universe, I think I might switch that up, you know, give the church all the money and the power and the, little, yeah. the, the evil ones. But it's just backwards. Do you think that's changing? No. You, no. No. I think it's getting it, worse. Well, like I said, I'm a Bible believer, so I believe that the book of Revelation is literal. It's not, I'm not a preterist, because in order to be a preterist, meaning the revelation's already happened or it's just metaphorical, then you have to not believe the Bible. You have to believe it's all metaphorical. Well, I'm sorry, I don't, that's not me. So that means it's it's not happened yet, and it's going to happen literally. So all of this a hopium of like us fixing things is a, is a fool's errand. The only thing that we might be able to do is push back the timetable. Like we mentioned, uh, they had to push back their timetable to 2030 because yeah. so let's keep rocking, right? Yeah. But, but ultimately, what we're called to do is occupy till he comes and just be in the battle. So you don't you don't believe that God gave us free will? Or is well, that something different? Of course. And that's why revelation is going to happen. Because he because, gave us free will. Because free will is can go both ways. It can, but can't can't we change outcomes mm-hmm. using our free will? We can, but my my belief is that the book of Revelation will be fulfilled. Well, I we we are fulfilling the Bible, but are we fulfilling the Bible because we are believing that so, and we were therefore making it so, or is it because it's just destined to be that way, and we're just falling along for the ride? That's a question I ask myself. There's a passage that speaks of that idea that okay. God is. We don't invent God in our heads. He's pre-existent one. He he's. He has neither beginning or end. So there was never a time when God didn't exist. He's the eternal one. Yeah. So we didn't create God with our minds. He's outside of time and space and he's eternal and he's awesome. All right. And then, you know, he gave us this book and it's pretty convoluted. It's pretty cryptic. It's all over the place, but it's what we got. And basically you got to either believe it or not. I talk to a lot of people that don't believe it. I talk to a lot of people that do believe it. I believe it. And so what I'm saying is, if you believe it, then the book of Revelation is literal. It's not a bunch of metaphors. There's literally going to be, you know, dragon dudes flying around killing people for five months. It's going to be hell on earth. Men will literally seek death and it will flee from them. And all the judgments, all that stuff is literally going to happen. And you're probably not going to get raptured out before then either. I don't believe pre-trib is possible. It's not. It's not anything I can really support because I've yeah. heard both. I've heard both sides. In my 40 years of following Jesus, I've probably gone back and forth seven times on pre-trib, post-trib. <laughs> I'd hear a guy and be like, 
wow, that's a great point. I'm gonna I'm preacher it, man. And then like <laughs> like six months later, I'll hear some other guy and he'll do the opposite. Oh my gosh, he's right. I'm post trip. <laughs> <laughs> Back and forth like seven times now. I guess we'll find out when it happens, right? <laughs> so I figure if I'm post trip, then I'm I'm basically I'm in the best mindset because if I'm if I'm wrong, yeah, I get raptured out prematurely, then I you know it's a pleasant surprise. I'm not disappointed. Yeah. Oh hey. Hey, look where I'm at. I didn't have to go through all that stuff. What? Right? <laughs> yeah. But you're prepared for it now. So if it goes that way, you you already know it's coming. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, my God. That's <laughs> awesome, man. All right. So we got we have about 20 minutes. I wanted to talk. The last thing I want to talk to you about, uh, and this is something that we both are involved in, but you're uh, you're an American state national or a a yes. state citizen oh yeah i'm so glad you brought this up man this ah is, this I, is my passion bro i love it man yeah we get i i love it too man because this is this is the way uh people can free themselves from a lot of the tyranny that that they're going through in their personal lives and it's it's um it's the truth about what has really happened to us as americans uh you know um and, and the funny thing is, I don't know if you saw, but um, I'll bring this up real quick. Uh, on uh, what was that Friday? On Friday, uh, a DOD committee uh, member uh, came on a uh, media platform, uh, one of the big, uh, you know, global media platforms. I believe it was. Uh, I don't want to get it wrong, but it's like G GBN, I think it's in a uh, British yep. uh, news station. And yep. she mentioned a couple of things that if you're not in this movement uh, and, and you haven't done this kind of research and connected with the right people, you might not know. But she mentioned the United States Corporation. She mentioned the Organic Act of 1871. Yep. She also mentioned that Biden is the president Yes, she said he was the legit president. There's back and forth from that. But what she said she, he was the legit president of was the United States Corporation. Oh, it was totally bombshell, man. Wait a second. What? Totally bombshell and not by accident. This stuff is coming out from the top. It is coming out from the top. And one of the exciting things that she mentioned is that President Donald Trump put some uh, executive orders in play before he left office that basically safeguarded us from lies um, that if people came forward uh, in the 2020 election and, and tried to do anything foreign or domestic that would be fraudulent against us, like, you know, stacking the votes or some kind of computer manipulation, anything like that, that certain things would happen. Uh, and basically what those things are is that the truth will be revealed and that we will return to a republic. Everybody thinks yep. we're a, de a democracy. Everybody yep. thinks we're a democracy because they use that word over and over again, democracy. But we're not. Nope. We're a republic. That's right. We're the Amer <laughs> United States of America <laughs> Republic. So anyways, I'm going on again, but I want to get your, your take no, on no, this. It's, it's a great synopsis. Her name is Jan Halper Hayes. Yes, thank you. Yeah, and she's supposedly a U.S. Uh, political analyst, and she's on the task force with the Department of Defense. That's her claim. Okay. I looked her up, and she seems legitimate. But, you know, as truthers, we're very suspicious. We don't Absolutely. think anything at face value, and we assume everything is the opposite. You know, Absolutely. Like the, the whatever. So, but yeah, everything you said was jaw-dropping that these things are now coming out. And so then what she also mentioned, too, was the way they're charging. They didn't charge Trump for treason, which means that he's this has opened the door for him to present all of the fraud of GovCo in yes. discovery, which is going to be a really uh, a great show. It's going to be terrifying for some people. Yes. yes. And then what she said is, do you honestly believe that they don't have all the evidence that the election was stolen? Because the media is just gaslighting us. They're just like trying to spin it like this is ridiculous. Do you believe that the election was stolen? And we're like, dude, are you on the same planet as yeah, us? Exactly. Do you remember like, I don't know if you watched the election night, you know, normally the, the polls close at whatever, nine or 10. I did watch it. Yeah. And then I'm like, they decided to leave the polls open. So three in the morning, the polls are still open. 
and then Trump was ahead. I watched it happen. And then yeah, all of a sudden, like a hundred thousand. You saw it freeze? Times. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. And then Biden won. And mm-hmm. I was like, what? Whoa. <laughs> no way. Well, then the other thing where, you know, the media is lying was Pennsylvania uh, Supreme Court changed election laws, which is totally illegal oh, under yeah. the Constitution. Only the legislature is allowed to do that. There's some proof for you. Yeah. And I don't know if you ever watched 2000 Mules. Oh, absolutely. Oh, my gosh. If, if you, you guys need to see it, True Rants on that, it's on. I have a, a link on my platform. You can watch it there. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, that's like, forget about it. So um, then there was like 60 cases that were filed, and they always bring that up. Well, there was 60 cases and he lost all of them. No, there was only three cases and he won two of them. The other 57 were never heard because of standing, which basically means the person has to claim some sort of impact or injury. So they weren't allowed to get it entered into evidence. But basically, they're saying that, you know, we're Trump is is involved in in, in trying to steal the election insurrection or whatever by not accepting legitimate polling results well no we're we're just saying that there's plenty of evidence to support that it was stolen and we're questioning it and then i saw an, a, a montage <laughs> this was incredible for four minutes the democrats saying the election was stolen when trump won so they did exactly what they're they just uh, uh, indicted him for which was questioning the election that's one of the things he was indicted for conspiracy yeah, yeah. it's crazy yeah <laughs> Now, she also mentioned how, remember when Trump walked in front of the queen and she said that was a That's sign. That's right. This yeah. is what this lady's saying on TV. She's going, that was a yeah. sign to all of us that he's going to bankrupt the Vatican and the crown and the U.S. from 1871, where we owed the crown uh, because they helped us in the Civil War. So- this is this is powerful because what I've been watching for the last three or four years, uh, like what I call the good news truthers. Mm-hmm. OK, and and there's a bunch of them. And I'm not saying I'm one. OK, but uh, Charlie Ward and those guys and then oh, Mel yeah. Kay and then Benjamin Fulford and all these different people who are, uh, are um, Bo Poloni. Right. And they're saying it's about to be a renaissance and there's going to be a quantum financial system and yeah. there's going to be all these things. And I'm like, I'm a Bible believer. It doesn't teach me it's going to get better. It's going to get worse. But, but the timetable is up for grabs. That's what I believe. So I'm, I'm, I'm confident that we can make a difference. So anyway, um, as I'm watching the good news truthers, if they would say something specific, like, a pedophile ring in Chicago was busted up. I would go to the data sphere and I would confirm what they were saying was true. And they were always correct. All right. So I was, I was minorly optimistic. Now this, these events that are unfolding, this lady talking like this and the things that are happening with Trump actually do seem to confirm the good news truth or the white hat narrative. Yeah, this this is a possibility. Now, a lot of us, of course, <clears throat> had to get off the Trump train. I remember, I remember when he was campaigning the whole time. Lock her up was the whole thing that he kept saying, right? Yeah. Well, then in his first on on election night, when he won in his acceptance speech, he goes, "Oh well, she's not so bad, really." Remember that? Hmm. And I was like, oh, come on, man. Don't, Actually, don't, yeah. Actually, don't do this. Starts yeah. backpedaling even before he gets into office. So, And then, of course, when he doubled down on the vax, a lot of us jumped off the Trump chain. That, that was just too much, man. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think there were strategic reasons for that. Uh, but you, you you never know. And it's we only see what we see. So you, you got to base it off what we have in front of us. But I did want to mention there is a lady uh, – uh, runs Freedom Force Battalion. Have you heard? She I haven't. Yeah, Freedom Force Battalion. Uh, I'm sorry, Freedom Force dot live. Uh, it's called the Freedom Force Battalion. Uh, I can't exactly remember her her name, but she uh, she she uses the Bible to 
come to her uh, understanding of things too. And she has mentioned that, um, you know, like you said, Charlie Ward and uh, the other one that he's having a fight with right now, I can't remember. Um, uh, some British guy and then Simon, uh, Simon, yeah, Simon, Simon Parks, uh, yep. and um, some of the other names. Um, you have uh, um, Juano Savin, all those guys, yeah. Um, she is saying that, uh, kind of the reverse though, that she she does believe those things are happening and that it's in the Bible. So, this is this is another thing that confuses uh, a lot of Christians, um, is because of the interpretation. Uh, that some people put on on the Bible. So um, I don't know. I, I would like to. I would love to get your opinion. I was hoping you would you knew who she was, so so we could kind of talk about that. But um, check her out. Um, yeah. Uh, and then you know, let me let me know what you think about some of the stuff she she says on on there. Um, but for the for the American uh, nationals, um, how did you win? I guess I should say win, and how did you go about? Uh, freeing yourself from the from the matrix and returning to your land and and, and soil uh sovereign self <laughs> this is so incredible and it's so i mean this is a lifetime of study but i'll try to encapsulate it all right so i've been studying it for about six years and i was like anybody else i didn't want to go to prison if yeah. i start picking a fight with the deep state right yeah but i'm studying i'm going to seminars i'm reading i'm all this stuff and then finally i hear one guy say don't talk like a king until you are a king boom and I said, that's my guy. Boom. Yep. Because what a lot of people did is they learned the lingo, um, but they never actually got their paperwork in, in a row. Okay. So the, the easiest way to understand this is you walk into Walmart and you're going to buy some vegetables, right? And the manager comes over to you and he starts barking orders at you and telling you to go pick up the boxes in the box room, right? And you're like looking behind you, you're like, you talking to me, right? Because- yeah. The, the, the manager has no jurisdiction to tell you to do anything. Right. But if two weeks prior, you'd come in and filled out a job application and you were accepted, when you did that, you were agreeing to allow him to boss you around. I love that. Yeah. Okay. Very awesome. simple concept. Yep. So when you filled out your first W-2 form for your first job when you were 16, you just agreed to pay taxes for the rest of your life. Boom. When you went to the DMV to get your license, you agreed to have to pay insurance, to have to use your blinker when you change lanes, all that stuff. You co you contracted with a private company. Now, here's the bombshell, the bombshell revelation. You can go to Dun & Bradstreet and look this up yourself. Every city, county, and state, every everything in your county, in your city, from the district attorney the court system, the police department, boom, boom, all the way down to the dog catcher are all have Dun & Bradstreet numbers. They're all privately held for-profit businesses. Yes, they are. Yep. This is mind-bending, okay? What that means is that they're de facto governments. They're fake, okay? So if I've undone my contracts with them, which I'll explain how to do in a second, if I've broken my contracts with them officially, Let's say I'm pulled over because I didn't use my blinker, okay? And the cop is telling me he's going to give me a ticket. All right, this cop is, I don't have a contract with him. He's not God, okay? He's not my daddy, and I'm not his property. Yes. So, so what jurisdiction, what authority does he have to tell me to do anything? None. 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 No. Because I can't walk up to somebody. If you're on the street at a hot dog stand, Nathan, I've never seen you before. I walk up to you and say, hey, let me see your license. I don't have, a, a, one man doesn't have authority to tell another man what to do, okay? Right. So, but this is where people start glitching out because they think, oh, well, you don't think the laws apply to you and the society needs laws to run. or well, Okay, so let's just tap the brakes <laughs> and just hear me out, okay? Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to quote some Supreme Court rulings. First one is I'm going to give you is the fact that codes are not laws, right? So right. if I go if I go to work for Walmart, then I have to comply with the rules of Walmart. If I'm not an employee of Walmart, then I don't have to have the manager tell me what to do. 
I'll tell him to go take a hike. In a similar way, if I have not contracted with GovCo in my county and state, you have to use your blinker is a company rule. I know. Yeah. Imagine that. I you mean, with me? Okay. I got you. So listen to this. Flurney, it's Flur, Flournoy versus First National Bank. A code or statute is not a law. Self versus Ray. A code is not a law. There's a whole bunch of these. So basically, there's a difference between law, which goes through a process and gets a number, or a code. It's a code violation. Well, what do you mean? The laws don't apply to it? No, if I'm if there's an injured party, I am responsible. I have to make them whole. Okay, but Sharer v. Cullen, for a crime to exist, there must be an injured party. Boom. Yep. So if I if I change lanes and I don't use my blinker, is there an injured party? No. There's no, no crime. There could be an injured party. There could be. But that's an assumption, right? Right. But this brings us to the real mind control problem, that, that there has to be this bureaucracy squatting on us, ruling over us because we're so incompetent. You know, if you carry a gun, you'll probably shoot somebody. No, I won't. I, you carry my gun all the time and I don't shoot myself or you. So <laughs> shut up. Just be quiet. All right. I'm perfectly capable of handling my firearm and my vehicle. And listen to this. Christy V. Elliott traveling in an automobile on the public roads was not a threat to the public safety or health and constituted no hazard to the public. And such a traveler owed nothing more than due care. This same right is still substantive rule in that, listen to this, speeding, running stop signs, traveling without license plates or registration are not threats to the public safety and thus are not arrestable offenses. Mm. Mm. Whoa, Jack, your head is <laughs> the top of your head's blowing off right now, but it gets better. Okay, so I'm not I'm not I'm not obligated to obey your your company's rules. As long as I have duty to care, I'm not trying to speed just because I can, okay? I don't want to get in trouble. But when it comes down to it, your code, I'm not in your jurisdiction. The the Walmart customer is not in the jurisdiction of the manager, and I'm not in your jurisdiction. And by the way, I have a passport that reflects that as an American Stage National. If I'm pulled over, I give them my passport and they run it. What comes up on the screen is do not question, do not detain. And yeah. they come back and they say, have a nice day. Yeah. We see it all the time. Okay, so listen to this. Colonial Pipeline versus Tragel. This is my favorite one. I want trumpets to blow. <laughs> Statutes apply only to state-created creatures known as corporations. Boom! Mm. Statutes mm. apply only to state-created creatures known as corporations. I got another one, Bond versus J. A statute will only be presumed to have extraterritorial effect outside the jurisdiction. <laughs> okay, so what that means is when you're born, what these psychos do is they use you, the living person, as surety for a loan of a million dollars that they take out against the IMF and a million dollar insurance policy. And they create a corporate fiction, a corporation, they use, they steal your name and they make it in all caps. That's why if you look at your driver's license, your credit cards, your bills, your birth certificate, everything name. is all caps for a reason. That's a non de Gaulle name. It's not by accident. All corporations are pretty much designated in all caps. So that's what that is. It's a fiction. It's like Mickey Mouse, okay? Mickey Mouse is a made up character. My name is John Kerwin. And all that corporate fiction, it John, says John Curl, but it's not me. I'm not that John Curl. I'm John, the house of Curl, and I'm a natural man. I'm not a corporation. I'm not a dead company. Okay, so what happens is they then trick you into contracting with them all through your life. It starts with the first W-2 form and then the driver's license and your first credit card and you get a college degree. Every every thing you do creates another QCIP number and locks you in. And then 
What we've been able to do, though, with the community that I'm with and the people I train with, is that you can start out by undoing this by sending an affidavit to uh, Washington and repudiating this status as a 14th Amendment uh, slave class citizen. Now, that's 8 U.S.C. 1101 is a American state national. Your allegiance is to your state versus 8 U.S.C. 1401. Uh, 1411, I think it is, where you are uh, under the jurisdiction and of you're, the United States. And you're quoting uh, United States Code, just for yes. those who don't know. That's United States Code. Correct. And it definitely is real. It's very real. Yes, it is. And and then once that comes back, then we publish that 21 days later. We record that on the land to make an official a court record. And then we send you to get your passport, and we show you how to do it to where the passport actually reflects your new civil status. And there's clearly two civil statuses. Mm -hmm. There's not just one, there's two, and but you have to opt out of that one and opt into this one. And once you've done that, we go to level two. This is where we, we do form 56 with the IRS. That's a shift of the fiduciary, makes you the executor mm -hmm. of this corporate fiction. And then we do an affidavit of status and what's called the revocation of election. That's so you can uh, elect out of your tax obligation because the tax obligation is for the United States Corporation employees or you, what we call U.S. citizens and That's not right. for uh, a, a living, breathing man or woman uh, living uh, in, on the land. Right. That's correct. That's correct. It's their terminology. It's a legal non-taxpayer. So if you're a tax, if you're a citizen person uh, resident, those are the three terms they use to get you to contract with them. Then, and you don't pay your taxes, you are a tax cheat, and they will come after you. But if you are a legal non-taxpayer, what happens with us when we send that revocation? We get a letter saying they need sixty days to respond yeah. and then about six months later you get a letter saying no further correspondence is necessary yep. <laughs> I, yep i went through that process and i and i got that and it was it was a beautiful, beautiful oh my session. gosh <laughs> oh my gosh For, i mean it's so I opened it. It. yeah you open it and you're like that's what i thought you know Dig it. <laughs> i mean come on man this is huge and so what i'm saying is this has never been more important to get into this and um, because they've, they've changed it now to where all the platforms like Zelle and, and, and all those things are going to require them to report any money beyond 600 bucks starting next year. Yeah, starting in like January 1st, isn't it? Yep. And so, and they do have 84,000 new IRS agents with guns. We confirmed that in the classified ad is real. So they, they the classified ad said, that the, these 84,000 new IRS agents that they hired had to be willing to wear a firearm to the audits. Think about that. Mm. And then remember about three, three years ago or so, it came out that the IRS had purchased like hundreds of millions of rounds or yes. hundreds of thousands of rounds and all these tactical gear. Yep. And I'm like, this is the IRS buying yep. all this? Yeah. So I do a training every Monday on free conference call. If you want to find out, just go to wakeuporelse.com. And, you know, I'm, I'm helping tons of people go through this process for free. I do, I do have a bunch of people that came and said, John, I'm so busy, man. Can you help me? And I, so I created a done with you outreach where I give you my cell phone number. I work with you all the way through. Like I handhold you. I, I help you customize the documents, you know, and you make a donation to us. We're a, we're a PMA. We're a private ministerial association. Nice. So it's just like a donation. But that yeah. way I can help, you, you know, shorten your learning curve, takes the stress out of it. I ended up doing both of those things twice because I made mistakes. So you won't have to worry about that. It's really, I got people taking me up on that for sure. Yeah, it's growing a lot. Um, this has always been a thing. Not a lot of people knew about it. Uh, lawyers, bankers did. Uh, they've been yep. becoming, uh, correcting their status since uh 1800s but um it, it's finally getting out here into the public to where we you know we can we can do that as well so um if you're into self-governing if you're if you want to be left alone and just and, and you feel you're responsible enough to be your own person you don't need a, a nanny or a, a daddy <laughs> daddy state <laughs> to 
to uh, intermingle in all your affairs your entire life. Um, this is something that you want to do. I have met people uh, in my journey uh, as as a national, state national, that uh, state citizen rather, um, that don't want to do it. They 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 like paying taxes. They like uh, the so-called benefits or uh, 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 things that are afforded to you as a as a U.S. citizen or as an as I call them, employee of the United States Corporation. Um, and that's fine. But um, I, I think like you're saying, John, I, I agree with you that in the near future that uh, it's it's really going to matter. And uh, at that time, uh, there's probably going to be such an influx of people trying to do this uh, that it's just going to be overwhelming to the the system. And, and uh, you know, things aren't going to be processed as quickly. So no um, doubt. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, we're running out of time here, John, man, I loved having you on here. Uh, we got to do it again, man. Definitely. <laughs> this was so great. What a great flow. We had a great conversation tonight. Oh great. my God. Yeah. It's one, it's one of the best, man. It's definitely going to go down as one of the best, awesome. uh, but I want you to plug your uh, stuff again. If you wouldn't mind, I'm going to throw it up here on the screen Okay, um, super. and and let people know how they can get a hold of you, how they can contact you and the three different things that you're involved in, uh, and how they would can contact you with that. Of course. Yeah. So my website is wakeuporelse.com and you can go see the schedule. We do a couple different things. We have live streams. I do teachings on our Mandela effect in the Bible. And then we have a Friday night hangout for Christian truthers just so you don't have to be alone on a free conference call. It's like, you know, just uh, we just talk about whatever stuff like we're talking about tonight. Then we have an addiction fellowship we do on Mondays at two for people, that, you know, struggling with addictions. And then on Monday nights at eight, I do the training um, on state national stuff. And so, um, and then, you know, my book is called The Conspiracy Theorist Survival Guide. So if you're a conspiracy theorist kook hmm. and you're getting pushback and you're trying to figure out how to navigate those troubled waters, you can head over to Amazon and get the book. It'll really help you. Yeah, I read it. It's it's a great book. Uh, John, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to write that. I think it's going to um, be a good resource for for people that are struggling to go through this process and feel like they're alone. And uh, that's that's the whole point of, of our talk here, too, is just to let people know they're not. If you want to pick up that book, he said it's on Amazon. It looks like it's about nineteen ninety five. dollars um, So go ahead and head over there and get that. You're not going to you're not going to, you know sorry you got it i can tell you that as a reader myself uh but that's all i got uh you can check all the wear out at allwearpodcast.com we are on uh, i heart radio uh player fm uh apple itunes uh and anywhere and everywhere you can get uh your podcast and until next time this has been an episode of all aware i'm nathan roshan with john kerwin and you are all aware Good night. Yeah, thank you, brother.